Okay guys, welcome to Malifaux and another tale of daring do. Yanlo's back out on the table and he's facing the new improved Misaki. The terrain, pretty much everything is hard cover, um, apart from these kind of signposts which are soft cover. Um, blocking, 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 blocking. Um, that's impassable blocking. These are height, probably two to one to three little rocks as normal. Uh, height one steps and then height two at the top here um, for the circus ring, climbable up the sides. And this caravan in the middle is our hazardous lion cage. So within one inch of it is hazardous terrain. Okay, it's clearly that lion is hungry and his cage is very badly designed. For the first time in what seems like ages, my opponent loses a deployment flip and so he gets to set up first. Which was really nice because he's got a Frycore Trapper, a Sue, Bert Jebson with Oathkeeper, a Librarian with Oathkeeper, the Hodgepodge Effigy, Misaki, the awesome vintage model with, what is that, Scout the Field, the Storm, and Risk and Reward. And finally, over on my, or to my right, we've got Envy. For my part, Yan Lo, right here in the centre, has Awakening. Such a good upgrade. Pretty much auto-include now. Reliquary. Anna Lovelace. Tashiro. With Command the Graves, of course. Carrion Effigy. Ashigaru. Ashigaru. Soul Porter. Carrion Emissary. With the Ancestral Conflux. My deployment has been dictated to me by my opponent. Uh, I just plonked everything behind this cover. My crew works when it sticks together, and so I don't want to be forced to spread out. And that's the power of a gun line. They really dictate the setup for an opponent that doesn't want to get shot to shit in turn one, and shapes the way they're, they're pretty much uh, subsequently going to move for the most part. So this wasn't ideal, but I wanted to control which of his models, particularly the sniper, was going to have access to uh, any one of my models. So I felt this was the best way to do it. The idea behind my crew is basically to be extremely defensive and um, move across the field as one big armoured unit. So everybody's going to move up as a blob, the Ashigaru are going to uh, constantly have their braced for the charge aura up, so that if anything wants to charge my crew or any model in it, they'll take 8 damage, which uh, should put people off. Anne is there to throw out her aura to stop anybody pushing or placing within, uh, within range to start attacking me, so basically they can't charge, they can't push, they're going to have to waste their AP to walk into me. And whilst that's happening, or whilst they're jiggling that, the carrion effigy, uh, emissary, sorry, Anna and Yan Lo to an extent can be shooting at them. And Toshiro can be uh, supporting the, the group by giving out plus flips, fast, and summoning back Ashigaru when they fall. Soul Porter just helps with the manoeuvring around of the ancestors, and also has a great speed bump in his own right. And the effigy is kind of a uh, flex slot. I was wondering if I should have a nurse to really make some of my minions frightening or to shut down something dangerous that uh, does get through. Or perhaps I could have taken a bell and uh, you know I'm very weak at long range. I've got quite I've got decent short range shooting, but um my crew is necessarily going to be slow given we have to stick around the Ashigaru and so uh, having some kind of range threat could be important, but ultimately I decided I wanted the extra stone and the effigy is just a good, cheap, tough model, who coincidentally will drop scrap for Toshiro to summon a Kamenu. So I've got some decently tough models. Most things of armour are hard to kill. Yanlo can potentially give them even more armour. And I can use Yan to pull things into the blob and kick the shit out of them to score the strategy. Vendetta is a weakness for my crew. I've, got zone, I've only got kind of big, chunky models. Or five stone Ashigaru. I mean, they could potentially do something, but uh, it seems risky. Although with Yanlo's Lightning Dance, I have more of a chance of setting up a, a Vendetta than I might otherwise do in another Master. But yeah, basically, Vendetta's a, a, a write-off, essentially. Take Prisoner, again with Yan, is, is never not doable. But it's fiddly, and my opponent is a very good player, and I just don't fancy my chances. Recover Evidence would be terrible against my, the, the crew my opponent has chosen, and I don't really have any models that could particularly do it. If you really want something with Don't Mind Me or some kind of reliable pushes. I mean, again, Yan Lo's Lightning Dance can allow me to kind of open up certain areas of the board, and he can uh, transfer his AP to make picking up stuff easier, but uh, really, he needs a little bit of extra support. I'm really going to try that scheme. And as I said, my opponent has got a gun line. He's just going to be hanging back. It's going to be really hard for my slow-ass crew to get to those markers. 
So it looks like we're left with claim jump and dig their graves. Oh, it's not claim jump, is it? It's the, the new one, whatever that's called. Basically, I've got to have two scheme markers within two inches of the center line and have um, a enforcer or higher level model standing within three inches of them to score. I've got four pretty tough models that can do that. I'm going to have to go to my opponents, so we'll be up and around the midline. And with Reliquary, I can bring my, uh, or at least two of my ancestors back. So I should be able to take some attrition on that scheme and dig their graves. Someone, if I'm uh, moving up as a blob, pulling stuff in with Yan, someone's going to have uh, a bit of space to drop a marker. Maybe the, the effigy will run marker duty. So we'll steadily cut them down one by one. So yeah, so when I got to this game, I was I really liked the idea of this crew. And then looked at my opponent's crew and just heart sinks. Uh, I almost couldn't think of a better counter for what I've brought. He has a ton of firepower that considerably outranges me, so I'm tough, but you know, I'm gonna take some major damage on my way across the board as I'm pretty slow. Or actually I'm not really that slow, but if I want to keep stick to my plan and keep everyone safe with the Ashigaru, then I'm pretty slow. And Masaki with new upgrades is just horrendous. She can sit back nice and safe uh, at eight inches or so, cast at my low defense stuff, do some big damage, ping off all those blast markers over my tightly bunched crew, ignoring my armor as always, and the push from a single thunder will uh, almost certainly break up my Ashigaru formation, ending their braced condition, unless I'm really committing the big cards if I've got them. And from there, he could just charge in and uh, do whatever he likes. Absolutely terrible for me. But hey, we've got to make the best of it. So my game plan is to move out from this cover up around here using the lion cage as a, um, a bit of cover as a blocker. Use the emissary's shards, which is why he's you know one of the reasons why he's here, just to block shot lanes and restrict the amount of firepower um, uh, insidiously man can put into my crew. And the idea is we're going to push up this side of the board try to keep um, um, try to split up his crew basically so that he can't bring it all to bear on me at once and just try to nom them through combat sweep around and hope for the best I'm gonna have to keep the Ashigaru or, or kind of try to stick to my plan to an extent as we're all gonna be quite bunched up anyway because of the terrain and Misaki will annihilate us if we don't make the best of the defenses we've got let's see how it goes Turn one, blurry hand, sorry guys, my camera I think is better quality than the previous one I had, but uh, it doesn't focus so well, or at least as quickly as I need it to, so uh, there's going to be a few blurries. A uh, bit of a meh hand, um, nice to see a 9 of nine of pros, I think the 10 was also a decent suit, maybe that was a, a, a tome, I think. Can't remember if I go first, but my first move is to get the carrion emissary over here, put down his shards to block the sniper, and now hopefully everything over this side will be out of range of where I want to be which is going to be around here around this rock and uh, if the sniper really wants to take a shot it's going to have to jump off this come a bit closer to me and into danger. This isn't great because I want the emissary's movement bonus to get my guys back, you know, out of this corner and into the game but I felt controlling his line of sight was more important. The outcasts move up just a bit non-committedly, got Sue, the librarian, the effigy coming out Envy doesn't really have a lot to do either, so he's given Masaki focus, I think. Masaki forgot to scout the field at the start, and we remembered uh, a little bit later, so she just kind of is actually up around here. And for my part, I'm trying not to give away exactly where Anna and Toshiro and Yan are going to be. This Ashigar has come out and put up his uh, braced aura. This one was forced to double walk up and just get in position for next turn. The effigy is also out. Everyone was within this Ashigaru's aura, at least. Oh, and this was the real pain. The way I've deployed here, I really kind of want Toshiro to come over this way, so that when the zombie comes out, I'll be within range to summon of it without having to like move around or waste AP getting to, to be within range. And I really want Anna over this side, because I figure this is where Masaki's attack lane is most likely. And as she's the only one that's going to be really doing any pushing, that's probably where I'll get most use out of Anna. But unfortunately, with the way I've deployed, I can't easily get round my own guys. I need to use the soul portal to move Shiro and Yan around to get them that, that little bit of extra movement. But um, I don't want to have to activate Shiro first because he'll end up around over here and uh, get shot by the sniper. So activation order is causing me a lot of problems. In the end, I think I resolved this by actually pushing Shiro this way and double running him around over to here. 
um, and I give the this Ashigaru fast. And this is how I intend to try to move across the field a little bit more quickly, with the Ashigaru leapfrogging each other, the rear one getting fast, and so being able to, to catch up a little bit as we go. The Soul Porcel also pushes Yan up, and then he kind of runs around. I'm not sure he does anything clever, other than ascend to... What is it? Ash Ascendant? I'm giving the Emissary fast. Most of the guys are in the aura, well, apart from Toshiro. So there's a weak angle there. I perhaps should have put him back a little bit. Um, he's at least blocking line of sight, hopefully, to Yan Lo from any nasty snipers that might try to target him. I think what I was thinking was that if I move him further up, next turn he can summon, walk up to hit, and then um, you know I'll be able to start. I'll drop a marker and start to scoring. Um, yeah, and if he's back here, then I might not be able to get into range. Oh, Yanlo has dropped a scheme marker. That is what he did. Masaki's come out to play. No fear, that lass. And then finally, Anna walks around the corner, preparing to make it awkward for Masaki to use her push triggers. And hopefully, hopefully, she won't be able to resist this nice, juicy bait of everybody stood all together. And she'll come in early without the support of, say, Bert, who's now hiding just behind this lion cage. And uh, yes, we'll take damage. That damage is inevitable. There's no way I can stop her from uh, <laughs> from doing that. So if she comes in alone, then maybe she'll whiff. Maybe I'll have enough left to take her down and sort of cut the head off the serpent. So that's what I'm hoping for. At the end of the turn, uh, my shards go away and I get a zombie. And I've just put him right here in this uh, charge lane or movement lane to just block up the outcasts as they approach. Try to keep Masaki isolated. And yeah, let's see what happens. Turn 2, Outcasts get the initiative, Effigy goes I think, and places Scheme Marker, gives Masaki a zero action, and then accomplice to Masaki. She uh, then targets one of the Ashigaru that was up here uh, with the downburst, I think stoning for the suit to then do the thunder. We don't get pushed around too much I think, that uh, was surprising. And uh, She then charges to Shiro, uh, doing horrendous damage as she's able to cheat even when on negatives using the thunder to again blast onto the rest of my crew so the effigy and my foremost ashigaru go down misaki gets the condition for the strategy yanlo has taken a few points of damage i think i've soul stoned uh toshiro's really badly hurt i think again i've soul stoned just to try to keep him up it was uh i was expecting toshiro to die and it was my kind of part of my plan that i would just summon him back with yanlo but i think on the last attack that uh could have killed him I decided just to spend a stone and see. Uh, I remember using soul stones to try to waste a, uh, Masaki's AP into having to attack him a little bit more to get the get the kill. And I flip a severe, and so uh, Toshiro lives on like one wound left at the end of this, which was excellent. So uh, he wastes no time in, in going in response. I summon the Ashigaru back. I then summon the uh, Carrion F. Uh, uh, Kamenu from the Carrion F effigy uh, scrap. So we're back up to numbers. My hand was pretty crap this turn, so that's taken all my decent cards, which were left over from last turn, actually. I, so I think I failed to make um, the Ashigaru fast, or, or maybe I targeted the Kamenu. Whatever, I failed to make them fast. But I have just been pretty lucky, and uh, so you can't have everything. Sue clears the path by hilariously red jokering my uh, mindless zombie to death. Nice to pull that out. My Ashigaru decides not to attack Misaki, and goes for the brace instead. I guess I'm trying to limit her uh, the usefulness of her diving charge next turn, and also I'm wary of Bert with Oathkeeper uh, just looking on the other side of this uh, lion cage, and so wanting to make it unappealing for him to come into combat with his reckless and his Oathkeeper and shit. The Kamenu teleports over the rock and tries to attack Masaki and doesn't hit her. I should say he ditched all which he then used uh, during his attack run. So he's got no stones left um, and lots of plus flips. Risky ventures indeed. My fast emissary then opens up on Misaki. And thanks to a horrendously timed uh, Black Do Joker damage flip, I don't do a single fucking thing to her. I was hoping that she's got no soul stones. I'm just going to use the whole of my crew to beat her down this turn. Basically, if I don't kill her, this is this is pretty much over this game. So I've got to put everything into it, and that is a shit start, Emissary. So in disgust, I put the shards up again. Um, I think um, mostly to get another zombie out over here. 
next turn. Stuff has been shooting into this combat. Oh yeah, that was it. Hilariously. So things like the uh, the trapper have been shooting in and pretty much flipping for everybody in this area. My opponent nearly went through his deck twice this uh, this turn. It was one of those flips he had to make. And basically everything is hitting Yan low. Because of course it is! And so he's like on four wounds or something now. It was just ridiculous. So the librarians come forward, uh, just to stand near the, the scheme marker, no surprises there. I put the Kamenu here to block line of sight from the um, from the librarian so that she can come and heal Masaki. But that's okay, because I haven't done any damage to her yet anyway. So whilst all the, uh, the outcasts are moving around, dropping scheme markers and standing near them, we continue to beat on Masaki. Anna unloads on her and completely fucking misses every attack. So I've now just got a fast Ashigaru and the Yanlo with which to kill Masaki, who has taken no damage. Yanlo goes, he lightning dances into Masaki successfully, getting the trigger to um, do the two damage in slow, which was very nice. He maybe then plinks off a couple of more damage. Burt comes around the corner and shoots the Emissary, getting a point for Vendetta. And I'm not too unhappy about that, because I reckon I've got the flexibility to keep the Emissary alive. I put the Soul Porter up in the way. Or maybe I did that before Burt came out, but anyway, so I've moved the Soul Porter up here in order to get Toshiro out of the way so my Ashigara could come in. And come in it does! So I use its fast walk to come around here, drop a card to charge Masaki. 1 AP, so basically I now get 3 attacks, love the Ashigaru, and he red jokers the bitch! Spitting her like a kebab. Gaining the strategy condition because Burt can see him, wahaha. <laughs> and scoring dig their graves, because I was happy to find that it was a... Uh, it's marked within 4 inches, not 3 inches, I can never remember which one it is. So that was excellent. And we're back in the game. At the end of the turn the zombie pops out just to be a dick. And we head on into turn 3! Resurrectionists luckily get the initiative this time, and I had quite a uh, decision to make here. Yanlo is on really, really low wounds. I think it was like four damage left, something like that. Frickin' sniper. To be fair, something else was shooting into the combat. I can't remember what it was, and uh, hitting Misaki. He never did any damage to her, but uh, that was uh, that was quite nice. So yeah, with Bert being over here and quite threatening, I decided to go with Yanlo. I drop a scheme marker, heal the emissary with one of my zeros, uh, you know, the emissary is his vendetta target, I need to keep it alive. Sorry to Shiro. Ascend to Spirit Ascendant, so that I can then pass ethereally through this rock and run away from Bert. And that should have made the emissary fast. Don't know if I remembered about that this turn. And then Bert goes, kills the Shiro, and then runs away from my zombie over here. And that's fine, I don't mind him being that, that, that distant from my emissary. And there's always more to Shiro's where that came from. As things play out, we've got Sue shooting at Yan Lo. Um, maybe this is where the damage, the big damage, comes in, and uh, Yan Lo's um, pretty unhealthy now. Sniper jumps off his perch and puts down a scheme marker, and um, the emissary puts down his little markers and scoots around over here, going defensive. Basically, my plan is to increase these guys' speed so they can get out up here, put, a, put down a scheme marker more than eight inches away from this scheme marker. I've used the uh, Soul Porter to push Yan Lo back up around here now things are safe and um, uh, be near this scheme marker. So all I need to do is get these dies to drop another one, get Anna running up around over here, again with the Emissary's extra movement bonus, and we should get our scheme point this turn. I'm not seeing any opportunities for killing any other stuff, so I think we're going to lose the strategy point this turn. But now that Misaki's down, so long as I play it just a little bit careful, I reckon we've got a good chance of this. The emissary's gone defensive because I'm looking at uh, this dickhead over here. But his minimum damage, oh, sorry, mid damage of five, mid damage of five, ladies and gentlemen, is fucking bullshit. And yeah, with uh, the rest of my crew quite damaged, uh, I can't afford to take the emissary out of the fight and hide him safely in the corner. So then I do something that's going to haunt me for years to come. But before I get to that, I'll tell you that the effigy went around over here, dropped a scheme marker. Um, matey dude Envy walked up a bit closer into cover and took shots at uh, probably the emissary, and I don't think it hit him, which was very handy. I put my Kamenu up and drop a scheme marker and just stay there. I decide not to, to teleport into the, um, the librarian, as potentially the librarian could escape my grasp and go and remove my scheme marker and it won't go. If I stay here, then uh, my um, melee 2 range means that she can't do that. But yeah, so it's just the librarian to go. 
and I have Anna and my Ashigaru. And I don't know what to say, guys. I, I that part of me that just hates winning stages a surprise coup in my brain, and I make about the most dumb shit move I've ever made. So I suddenly see that oh, he's going to get his points this turn for for uh, whatever the the always scheme is called. Uh, I'd better stop that. Oh, if I could like run around over here, I can just make it, and then I can like push Bert away, and he won't be near the scheme marker anymore, and that will kind of make use of all Anna's AP, and it'll be great. So what I do is I double walk around into the hazardous terrain, take a severe damage, of course, which I soulstone using my last soulstone, preventing three damage, which is very nice, but just so happening at the same time to be well within. Uh, flurry range of uh, this rather nasty looking librarian and more than three inches away from my fucking ski marker which was the whole fucking point of me being up here and then I failed to vortex but and even if I'd succeeded he would have hit the terrain and still be in range of the marker this my lady my friends ladies and gentlemen was a fucking fucking terrible move I could have walked up over here into cover near the ski marker and then vortex this guy away from the scheme from his scheme marker and potentially, you know, potentially got the point denial that way. It might not have been possible, but I would still at least have been in, uh, in, in, with some chance of scoring this point. Uh, as it is, I didn't do that, and the librarian flurries Anna to death with the red joker. So with a single move or single activation from a position where I'm just starting to take control of the game, I just throw it in the bin. What a knob! Screaming curses at myself, we go into turn 4, and those are some very nice 13 suits that I can use to summon Tashira back with and get extra attacks from my emissary. Really nice. So perhaps it all is not quite lost. Well, it's a tricky decision where to start with the initiative this turn. I've really got to kill the librarian before it rips me a new hole, but Bert is also really high priority because I need to get him killed before he can uh, take all the points from my emissary. In the end, I think I go for the Librarian, um, as I've managed to tie up most of this part of the board with Peons, from which he can't score. Uh, but Peons, by the way, are great in this strategy. Take them if you can. And the, it just makes... The, the Emissary is just so good. Peons, it's Corpse Markers, Chief Ian, no scoring. It's just brilliant. So yeah, I attack the Librarian and Flub. These guys all pile in on Bert. I've got, we've got the... Um, and I think we're not doing any damage really. Frickin' Trapper manages to push away, drop another marker, and then uh, kind of get in and stand somehow so that he's uh, he's holding things up. Really versatile model. I'm always impressed by that guy's pushes. Something happens over here, and I'm forced to use one of my 13s. And without thinking, I put down the 13 of Tomes. And I've got no soul stones left. I really wanted to summon uh, Toshiro back this turn so that I wouldn't have to then put the emissary up into danger and uh, go stand by a scheme marker to get my point. But I used my 13 of tomes, instantly regret it, and now there's no Toshiro this turn. But I see another way. The emissary flies forward into danger um, and uses its 13 of masks to freaking beat down the, uh, the librarian, who has been taking a couple of little plinks of damage here and there. Kills it good, blasts onto the, uh, the effigy, nice. Puts down his shards to protect himself from Envy's retribution and uh, gets the point for the strategy because uh, Bert can see him. Frickin' love you, Emissary. Yanlo manages to weather some more shooting from Sue, getting pretty lucky there. Bert is left with not really much choice but to just kill his way through the zombies. Yanlo teleports in, desperately trying to go for the, that kill and uh, puts ends up with uh, Bert on his last wound. Couldn't quite finish the job off there, but... With the Librarian kill, I do manage to stop the point this turn, and manage to score dig their graves uh, from it, so that was quite nice. Oh, you'll notice that things have smoothed around a little bit here. I Lightning Danced to the um, uh, Trapper, put him off over here by the Soul Porters so that um, Bert couldn't just keep dishing off his damage onto him. With his armor, I was never going to kill the Trapper, and so this way kind of uh, made it more likely that Bert would go down, um, but unfortunately he didn't. So we ended this turn drawn for the strategy. Envy, I think, killed my Kamenu, and uh, and so the uh, and the emissary also killed the librarian. So we reasoned that they would keep that condition 
as the wording seemed to us to say that uh, you only end the condition when you score points from it. Uh, let me know if you know how that's, uh, the exact way to play that, but I think that's right. Turn five, it's pretty close. This is a uh, you know a big turn. We need good cards. Uh, neither of us have any soul stones left. I forgot to mention that when Misaki died, uh, she obviously ditched most of her soul stones that turn. And so lost them all when she died, uh, just showing you Risky Ventures is definitely if it lives up to its name. And yeah, so that card, that hand is mostly trash, um, but we've got the card that will summon back to Shiro. And maybe finally I can score a point for a guarded treasure. The initiative flip is massive, and I win it, and Yalan goes. But has only one wound left. I ascended to Blood Ascendant last turn because I had so much chi from all the zombies dying. So Yanlo is now quite a beast. I think I had like one chi left over from after the ascension because the soul port has been poking stuff and feeding me. Um, I drop one of my shitty cards to get some more. We attack Bert with my glowing mouth light. I miss. He red jokers I think the defense and so he nearly kills me with his defensive trigger. That would have been absolutely horrendous and so that really scares me and so I now <laughs> use uh, my zero action to lightning dance at him and just try to get the trigger to kill him. I think I fail. I do it again, this time cheating my high tome to get the trigger and uh, finally take him down, getting myself the condition. Um, oh, uh, and then I, I walk away over here, away from Sue, still within sight of the trapper getting the condition. We're up near the marker, so I might just be able to squeeze this out. Trapper escapes uh, with his little push and shoots at Yanlo. Thankfully, Black Jokering. Come on! Soul Porter moves up to tie down um, Sue. I don't really do any damage to him, I don't think. Um, I stay out of range, uh, so it's harder for him to. This was a little bit of a mistake. I should have put him further up um, so that it was would have been harder for Sue to uh, get to the marker. He would have had to take a disengaging strike. I didn't. Envy comes around and finishes off Yan Lo, which sucks because now we're at even Stevens again for the strategy points with both Envy and the bird having uh, having one apiece. And the Ashikaru initiates a desperate charge. So I walk up into range, ditch a card to then charge the effigy and bring it down. We've both used all cards that are very good at this point and so it was just literally coming down to uh, whose deck liked them better and mine did. If, Insid if Insidiously Mad had any kind of card luck, he would be an absolute monster of a player. But he gets by just fine with just his cunning. Uh, Sue moves around over here and escapes my uh, effigy, uh, not effigy, Soul Porter's grasps, getting out even further, still within range of the marker. Significantly, I now can't reach him with my emissary. Not that I was really very likely to kill him anyway, but uh, I'm probably more likely to kill him than I would be to kill Envy. So now there's pretty much no way I can stop him from scoring that point. And with Yan Lo gone, my idea of moving the zombie out over here, changing it into a scheme, oh, and then moving up with the emissary and changing it into a scheme marker to score the point, I, uh, you know, that's out the window. So just for fun, I move up and shoot at, uh, Envy. Hilariously, I do get the trigger to do it again, and I put four damage on him after armor. Yeah, it's just he's a hard nut to crack. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is where we end the game. Final scores, the Outcasts got one point for Public Executions, three points for Guarded Treasure, and one point for Vendetta. The Resurrectionists scored two points for Public Executions, two points for Dig Their Graves, and no points for Guarded Treasure, making this game 5-4 to the Outcasts. Oh man, that was so close. I could taste victory, could taste it, until what the fuck was I thinking? I mean, it was bad enough that she failed to do literally anything earlier on against Misaki. My Anna model is cursed, like she never flips anything more than a 2 for a defense. But this and I feel I've plumbed new depths of stupidity here. Not my proudest moment. Other than that, I really liked my crew. Uh, the Ashigaru did really well just um, uh, putting up their auras, making it awkward for charging. I mean, if his crew had more charging, then that maybe would have had more effect. But oh my goodness, they were just amazing fighters by themselves. With fast and being able to charge for 1 AP, 
and especially round to Shiro for the, for the plus flips. They are not to be trifled with. Really impressed by these little guys. Man of the match, clearly the emissary though. I mean, no surprises. He's just he's just so good. Being able to block the line of sight uh, from the shooting was so important for keeping my uh, keeping my guys standing. Keeping up the flood of peons on this uh, on this flank, giving me chi, potential corpse markers, and just again choking up the shooters, choking up his ability to, to kind of wrap around and, uh, and get into my crew. Being able to move up and with one AP smack down the librarian, blast onto the uh, the um, hodgepodge, setting him up for the kill next turn, and then keeping himself safe from retribution, speeding up the rest of my guys. So that, uh, just he's just such a phenomenal model. And Yanlo is uh, ascendant. Is the, that's the upgrade, isn't it? Yes, awakening. Amazing upgrade. Absolutely what he needed. Instinctual just slots in like it should have always have been there. Just being able to get your upgrades as you're supposed to be, uh, you know, as he depends on, and heal in the same turn. Um, yeah, it's just, it's just changes the game so much. Uh, the additional ability to get that extra AP, or extra lightning dance, I should say, with its oh so useful trigger is again, it's just, it just changes how he feels so much, and it just, it, he feels so relevant now. Uh, really, really liking that upgrade. I think the other one's pretty good too, um, but if uh, you manage to play him kind of central so that he's within range to take a suck up chi from all the dying, and especially with the emissaries there, just keeping the models uh, coming, I'm not sure he really needs it every game at least. Disappointed I didn't get Reliquy to work. I felt it was pretty good for this, uh, this strategy or scheme pool. I blew through my soul stones too quickly, uh, Misaki coming in and doing all that damage was... Uh, as big a pain as I predicted it would be, and I was uh, you know, lucky, ultimately, to have taken it down. That could have easily just been a game ender right there. But yeah, really, really fun game. So bitterly disappointed I couldn't take the win from this. Um, really poor play on my part at times. Because yeah, man, Yan Lo is strong now, I, th I think. I've been looking at most of the, uh, the schemes and strats that we draw recently and thinking, yeah, he's got a good chance of doing pretty much all of them. Uh, which is more than I can say for certain other masters that I, I'm, I'm trying out. Final scores, the Outcasts got 1 point for Public Execution, 3 points for Guard Treasure, and 1 point for Vendetta. Resurrectionists got 2 points for Public Execution, no points for Guarded Treasure, and 2 points for Dig Their Graves, making this game 5-4 to the Outcasts. Great game, and ah, oh, so close. Victory was there, I could taste it taste it and I threw it away cannot believe how bad that move was and I think my Anna model might be cursed she never flips more than a two for anything but yeah just just awful I really liked my crew I felt the idea was viable the Ashigaru were just spectacular they were so I underestimate them every time they're just so good very pleased with how they worked out but of course MVP goes to the carrying emissary he just did so much for me this game, giving my crew uh, extra movement so they could run and drop markers. I mean, it's not easy to get stuff 8 inches away. I'm constantly controlling my opponent's line of sight um, with the shards was just so important as always. Summoning the peons to completely hold down this flank and uh, not give up any points. Produce lots of corpses for you know where Toshiro could potentially have come back and give uh, Leyanlo lots of chi when they die. And acting even as a true beater, taking out an enforcer, blasting onto another one in the same, uh, you know, just so AP efficient. Such a great model and such a total crutch for me. As expected, Thunder Masaki was horrendous. She can do so much damage now to my low defense uh, armored uh, little guys. I think it was a bit too risky for my opponent to send her in alone without any soul stones. The plus flips were good, but if I'd had a better hand, then uh, I could have pushed more stuff through. I mean, it very nearly did work. If my hero Ashigaru hadn't come in and, uh, and red jokered her, he probably would have killed just about everything else in my crew next, uh, you know, in the next turn. But as I said, risky. I think she definitely needs um, some support before going in. And risky ventures certainly does live up to its name. Potentially losing all your soul stones is a big risk. Although I liked my opponent's crew build in that she was the only soul stone user in it. Anyway, hope you enjoyed that. I certainly did, and I'll catch you on the next one. Take care.